Okay. We can just do a piece of paper. <laughs> I'm live. <laughs> Let me turn my back on everyone. <laughs> okay. Well, hello. <laughs> um, welcome to Waters Garden Center. My name is Michelle, and we are going to talk about fruits and vegetables, herbs, um, and getting a nice garden planted today. Um, so the first thing that I do um, every year is I have a book, uh, a, a, basically a, a log of what I do. And every year I plot out, you spend hours plotting out the, the what arrangement. And then you go and you start putting plants in there and it's like, it doesn't fit. Um, so there's a racer along with it. So I, I start racing and starting all over again, or husband goes to Home Depot and makes me a new bed and he's not really happy about that, but it happens, you know? Um, so spring is really nice for planting this stuff, um, but we're getting close to serious planting season right now. Um, so if you have uh, are thinking about a garden, the first thing you really want to think about is what do you want to produce? Um, are you a salad a, a lover? Um, do you want just greens, um, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, uh, artichokes, that type of thing? Um, so in Prescott, we have actually three planting seasons for vegetables here. Um, we have our cool season crop that is usually from March until May, middle of May, um, once the heat comes on, all your lettuces, um, your cauliflower, your broccoli, all of that stuff's going to bolt on you, which means it's going to go to flower and you're going to be done. Um, so that's when you pull those crops out and you plant your tomatoes and things like that. So you can reuse that garden um, space. Um, Beans um, or tomatoes need a, a lot of uh, root space. So if you are going into a raised bed, um, make sure that you have at least 12 or 18 inches. The, the deeper, the better for tomatoes. Um, they will take over a, a good three foot spot. If you're in a container, that's fine. They will be contained in that container. Um, you might have a difference between a raised bed and a container plant as far as the size. Usually, if you just let a tomato go, you can get an eight foot, 10 foot tomato. Um, so they can get really big, really fast. Um, so make sure you're planning accordingly as far as the space that you're going to need. Um, Container gardening is very easy to do. If anybody's tried to dig in our soils, it's really hard. Um, so containers are really easy. Raised beds um, are, are nice as well because they're higher. We don't have to bend over so much um, to pick weeds and things like that. Uh, so consider all of these things and Write it down in your diary what you need to do, because like I said, we are a little bit past time for your lettuces and beets and carrots things. Um, but for your tomatoes and peppers, you're ready to go. Um, almost. Almost. Um, because we do have nights like three days ago when we dropped down to 25 and we lost all of our beautiful trees that were starting to spring out. Um, just a really quick note on that. They will be fine. Um, all trees, shrubs always have a second set of leaves. Give it a haircut. If you haven't fertilized, go ahead and fertilize. Use some root and grow. It's a stress reducer and those will help all of those brand new trees get reestablished. Okay. Um, so back to the veggies. Um, 
So um, be careful with those frost dates. You can't, tomatoes, peppers, tomatillos, cucumbers, beans are warm season vegetables. They need their soil temperature to be in that 45 to 50, which we really don't reach until um, early May, mid-May. So yeah, you can help them. Walls of water work really well. Um, hoop houses help. A lot of people take them in and out of their house for a while. Um, all of those things help us get bigger plants. So when we do go into the garden, we're starting earlier, you know. Um, most of your maturity rates on your tomatoes and stuff are like 60, 65 days, which is really nice. Your cherry tomatoes are even shorter than that. Um, your heirlooms will take longer. Um, so when you're looking at your tomato plants, kind of a plan accordingly and see what um, space you have and do some or um, don't mind it. Don't mind. It's like, wow, everybody's pointing over there. <laughs> um, so um, do a few of different varieties and that way you, you have some early and then you get the good stuff later on because you, you cannot beat an heirloom tomato. They're just magnificent. Um, so, um, experiment, be adventurous, you know, if you have your favorites, do that and then add something else. Um, I always throw something new in my garden just to see what it's like, you know, um, it might be your favorite new vegetable or tomato or something like that. Um, so play with it, enjoy it. Um, your garden is there for you and to enjoy. Um, it shouldn't be a chore. It, it is, but it shouldn't be um, because we all enjoy doing this. Um, so um, visit your garden often once you get it planted. Um, bugs and diseases can sneak up on you really, really quickly and overtake. Um, if you get white fly on like zucchini and squash, you're going to be pulling those because you won't be able to keep them alive with the amount that can come on to them. So pay attention. It'll help you be a better gardener um, and it'll save you the agony of having to pull plants that are starting to produce later on. Um, once you get a plan together, um, whether you are in a, the ground or in a raised bed, there are amendments you want to put in as you're doing it. Um, if you are starting in a, a garden um, and you're planning on doing tomatoes and peppers uh, towards the May, uh, early May, get some barnyard manure and some mulch in those beds. Get them tilled up put some fertilizer down. Um, that'll get all those nutrients and everything ready for you when you go to plant. Um, you can always side dress with your, your fertilizers as well um, to get things going. In your gardens, you're probably gonna fertilize a little bit more than you do your shrubs and your trees because you're gonna be watering a little bit more than you would your shrubs and trees. Um, so fertilization is really important because what, if they run out of those nutrients, they're not going to do well. Uh, so make sure that you're, you're adding that as you go. Um, let's see. Starting with um, the easiest things. If you're, you're a beginner, be, beginning gardener, um, start with small things like lettuce, carrots, beets, um, easy to grow. Um, you don't have to worry about blossom drop, uh, blossom end rot on your tomatoes. Um, we can help you if you decide you want to do that. But if you're, you're just starting out, you can do some easy things and just kind of get a, accustomed to it and then add some more difficult things later on. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just kind of go through some of it, um, kind of tell you when it should be planted and um, how to go about doing that. 
So, sorry? Yes, we do. Uh, her question was, is do we have a, a chart? And that'll be part of, um, we're going to send this around. I've got to step back because I'm too far. Um, sorry, we're, we've been so busy we didn't get a sheet written out. But just your name and your email address on here. We'll make sure that you get that chart. Um, and it'll tell you when to plant what. Um, so it's really helpful for that. Um, so um, I'm going to start with the tomatoes first, um, just because they're right here handy. Um, so tomatoes and peppers, beans, like nighttime temperatures above 45. Um, that helps the soil warm up. And so they don't freak out once they get into the ground. Um, if you plant them early um, and... Uh, we get cold like we have been, basically you're going to stunt them. Um, they can get spots. They can get diseases really easy um, if they get planted too early. So be really careful about that. Um, like I said, most I always tell people, bring them in and out or uh, don't plant them until May. Uh, Mother's Day is the last frost date. However, a couple of years ago, we had a, a, about three inches of snow on Memorial Day. So it does happen. Again, pay attention to the weather. Um, weather and vegetable gardening go hand in hand. So you, you really want to pay attention to that. Um, so planting a tomato, uh, there are several ways to do it. A lot of people will start them with, in, with seeds inside. Um, and it's really fun to do because you get to see them grow. Um, unless you have a lot of light, tomatoes tend to get really leggy. They'll get really tall and then there's nothing much there. So it's really easy to fix that. Um, when your tomato gets about yay tall, and, and you usually start them out in the little jiffy pots, um, transplant that into something this size. And when you do that, if there's any little growth on this side, if you pull this stuff off and plant it that deep, uh, so you are planting all of this, this becomes rootstock. Um, so you get a thicker root. Um, and then depending on how early you start that, you can actually do it again. I usually end up bumping my pots up a couple of times. This helps two things. It, you don't get the leggy tomatoes um, and it also, you get a healthier, bigger plant that will take to your garden easier uh, when you get it out there. If you take one of your little seedlings uh, straight from your kitchen window and you put it outside in the middle of the day, it's just gonna go beep. Um, so it, it, it's kind of like getting it used to being outside. You, you want to take it out early in the morning um, when the sun isn't so intense and then take it back in. Do that for a couple of days and then every day kind of add a couple of hours in there so it gets used to being that warmer and warmer. Um, or you, you, you're going to feel that fail, sense of failure when it just kind of melts outside. Um, that goes for the pepper or the cucumbers and all of that stuff. If you start that inside, do the same thing. Get it used to being outdoors um, so it'll, it'll transplant better for you. Once you get it this size, you can put this straight into the garden. Um, tomatoes come in determinate and indeterminate. Um, the difference between determinate and indeterminate is that indeterminate continues to grow. If you take an indeterminate plant and put it in a greenhouse, it will continue to produce for years. Um, as long as it's getting fertilizer um, as necessary, it will continue to uh, to produce. Um, indeterminate, usually uh, you'll have a full range of tomatoes, so it all happens all at once, um, and then you're done. 
Um, so like most of your Romas, um, I think San, no, San Lorenzo is, is indeterminate, but I think Roma is, is in, uh, determinate. So it's just once. Um, the, the patio tomatoes, some of those are determinate. So they, they, they are uh, all produced at the same time. It's kind of like strawberries in that way, where some of them are ever bearing, you get fruit all the time, and then some are June bearing and you get it all at once. Uh, one that produces all together, all at once, and then indeterminate just continues to produce. And usually your indeterminate will grow tall. You definitely want to make sure that you're staking your tomatoes, whether you use the cage, which they typically outgrow, um, or a stake. Um, there, there's no wrong way to stake a tomato uh, as long as it's staked. Um, last year, I had mine kind of covered up. It was protected. Three days before that stupid hailstorm that we had in June, I took my, my cover off because they were pushing up against the, the cover and they just got wiped out. However, my tomato just kind of fell over and took over the rest of the garden. So I had a long winding snake of a tomato, um, but uh, it was great. Um, it was actually Michelle's favorite. I've been pushing these hard. Um, this is a midnight snacker. Uh, it's a little cherry tomato, and this was the best producing tomato I've ever grown. Um, and I've been growing tomatoes for a long time. I used to like the sun golds, but this pushed them off the cliff. Um, nice big fruit. Um, there weren't too many small ones. They were all nice and big. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so if you need a, a cherry tomato, those were the ones that I would choose. Um, um, early girl, better boy are some of the earlier producing tomatoes, um, 60, 65 days, and you'll actually have a tomato. Um, black crim is an heirloom. Um, purple skin, um, really pretty. It's a really pretty tomato. Um, nice, wonderful flavor. Um, Cherokee purple is another one of my favorites. Um, it's another purple tomato. It actually has a smoky flavor to it, so it's great for salsas and things. Um, so uh, just some of Michelle's favorites. Tomotillos are um, a great uh, plant as well. Um, great for salsas. Um, the one thing a lot of people don't know is that you actually have to have two in order to get good pollination. So make sure that you buy in pairs, and you need a set of two different varieties. It's kind of like your uh, apple trees. You want, you want two separate uh, varieties. Um, these also like warm temperatures, so make sure it's warmer when you go out and plant these. While I'm on warm season stuff, I will talk a little bit. Um, bell peppers. Uh, we will have a huge variety of bell peppers. Uh, I actually have a chart uh, for the hot, uh, the heat ratings on, on peppers. It's back there next to the peppers. So if you're ever wondering where a pepper lands as far as the heat goes, there's a chart back there. Um, this one's a new one for us. It's called Cajun Bell. It's actually a bell pepper with some heat. Um, it, it sounds like a, almost like a jalapeno, but you get more pepper out of it. Um, so um, peppers, you wanna make sure that you're planting them around Mother's Day. Um, if you're planting a red pepper, it's gonna be green and just wait till it turns red. Um, your hot peppers, the longer you leave them there, the hotter they're gonna be. Um, so um, kind of be careful of that if you're concerned about the heat. Um, eggplant is another one of our favorites. Um, it does really well. It, it loves the sunshine. Um, there are several different types. Millionaire is one of the long 
skinny uh, eggplants. Uh, the, the Black Beauty is a one of the bigger fat ones. Um, so we, we get a couple of different varieties of those. Um, cucumbers. Um, cucumbers, I don't have very many right now, and I only have a couple of uh, uh, zucchini were left. Um, I could only find a few. Um, but again, you want to be careful with the coal. Um, but usually they grow like weeds once you get them going. Um, so um, your, your zucchinis are going to grow more in a bush form. Uh, so you'll have just one plant. Most of your squash will we'll, we'll climb in, in, in trail along. Uh, so if you don't have a lot of space, think about going uh, vertical. Um, there's several ways to do this. You can uh, create some sort of teepee trellis and have them climb up that way. Um, you can do um, kind of like pole beans and do a tent uh, shape for it. Um, that way you can have them kind of hang down um, it, you can do your melons that way. Um, a couple of the books that I've been reading, they actually kind of made a hammock for a big cantaloupe um, just because it got so heavy, you, you just didn't want to break the, the stem on it. So kind of be careful with that type of thing so you can uh, it doesn't break and then stop growing for you. That, that's what it was made out of. So nylons work really, really well. Um, as far as holding it up and, and giving it the support uh, that it will need. Um, so you can always go vertical. Um, it's really, really easy to do. Um, you can do it in a pot, even going vertical. So think about that if you, you decide you want a smaller space. Okay, cool season stuff which should already be planted, but I still have a few. Um, so lettuces, um, these, if I was going to go home and plant some of this stuff right now, I'd put it in the shade um, just because it'll stay cooler for you and you, it won't bolt quite as fast as it would out in the full sun. Um, and you'll still get quite a bit out of it. Um, lettuces, you just keep picking until you're, you're, you're completely done. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's always fun to go out and pick yourself a salad. Uh, peas are also a cool season uh, plant. Um, if you, these should be planted in March. Um, so by now you've had the flowers, you should have little pea pods on them, um, or you should have them by now. Chard, uh, chard will actually hold up during our summer. So you start early and just to continue to enjoy it. Um, if you're looking at some of this stuff, we do have another season coming in September. Um, all of this stuff comes back in. So if you get it planted in September, you will have a crop by November. Uh, so you can do that. Yes. No, it, it can handle the full sun. Mm-hmm. Yep. Not really. Um, the 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 uh, pak choy seems to handle it a little bit more, um, or bok choy. Sorry, um, but um, the the lettuces tend to uh, yeah. will bolt. Sorry. Onions, uh, this is another uh, cool season thing. Um, they usually uh, will fall over come January uh, or uh, June, I'm sorry. Um, so when you buy onions like this, I usually soak this and I'll take them out and I'll soak it in a pan pot of water. Um, and then I separate them and then plant them individually. Um, if you plant all of it, you won't get big onions like this. They'll, they'll be smaller. Um, it, so it, it kind of depends on what you want, but it, you're paying for a whole bunch of onions, so you might as well plant them properly. Artichokes. 
Artichokes are actually a perennial. Um, so if you get them planted, you can, if you um, mulch them in the winter time, they will, will come back next year. Uh, so these are an awesome plant to have in your garden. Uh, just put them in a spot where you can continue with that. Uh, asparagus is another one that's kind of fun. Um, we get these in, and they're, they're actually two-year roots in here. There's five plants in this bucket. Um, the first year, you, you really want this to, to continue. This is, is called going to fern, um, and this is kind of what it does. Your next year, you should have two or three pieces um, of actual asparagus with this. And you can start picking at that point. Um, and they will continue to spread. So if you have a section where you can do that, um, they're an awesome plant uh, to have. Um, a lady was in here not too long ago and she had 15 plants. And she said that would take care of her and her husband for the rest of the summer. So. Um, they just continue to produce and produce. Broccoli, um, broccoli cauliflower also is a cool season thing. Um, these are just now starting to fruit. Um, and so um, if this was in the ground, it, it has a very small pot, very probably very root bound, um, but it, it would have gotten a bigger head if it was actually in the ground for you. Um, so um, think about this for the fall and enjoy it. Okay. Questions on vegetables? Yeah. You, you'll get just about that if you plant them. Um, so yeah, the season's just about done for those. Um, we're, we're getting in gear for the tomatoes, the peppers, the, the green beans and all of that stuff to come in. So um, it's fun to have, some, fun to play with um, just to see how they grow and then plan on doing it in the fall. And that way you get your big head of uh, cauliflower and, and broccoli. Okay. Strawberries. Strawberries are fun, um, and they do very well here. Um, I actually failed a couple of times with strawberries. I put them in morning sun, and it, they were in a pot, and they just weren't happy. Um, I tried them in the sun. I killed everything. Um, last year, in my raised bed, um, it was the first time I'd actually done a raised bed, and I covered it and they were very, very happy. Um, so I think a little bit of afternoon relief, whether it's a shade cover or if you um, uh, have a, about six, seven hours of sunshine, they'll be fine. Um, but I brought a couple of different types up uh, so you can see. Isn't it pretty to have a strawberry that looks like that? It, it's just gorgeous. Um, so uh, these guys have red flowers. This one has pink, and then this is just your regular strawberry. Uh, this is Fort Laramie, and this is an ever-bearing strawberry. So it means that it'll just continue to produce fruit all season long. The These two are... Um, uh, also ever bearing. So um, some of the like or, um, sequoia is a June bearer. Um, there's a few other June bearing that we have up here. Um, so if you want to continue just to pick, have a few on your breakfast cereal, uh, ever bearings are kind of the ones you, you want to have. Um, and they're kind of pretty. Um, if you don't have a lot of space, you can throw these in a flower bed uh, or along a walkway um, and just give you some color throughout your garden that way. Uh, 
I couldn't resist bringing this up. Um, this is a fall gold raspberry. Um, this is a huge healthy plant um, and it's gonna produce tons of raspberries. The fall gold is a um, yellow raspberry uh, and it you'll... We're so used to that. I don't even feel it anymore. Um, um, thank you though. <laughs> um, I miss my chair. Uh, uh, um, so uh, raspberries, there's red raspberries and yellow ones. Um, we also have blackberries. Blueberries uh, need some shade um, when you go to plant them. They don't like the full sun here. Um, it's too intense. So make sure that they get some shade um, or they're going to fry. Uh, we're just so dry and, and being a mile high that it just blazes on them. Um, so be careful with those. He's even coming out of the bottom. <laughs> Lavender uh, is an herb. Um, it's also a pretty, uh, it, it's very pretty herb. Um, and there are several different types of lavender. This is a Spanish lavender. I think it's the most showy of the lavenders um, just because the flowers are so gorgeous. Um, they all do very, very well here. Most of them get in that 18 to 24 inches tall and wide. Um, they usually will bloom for you twice a year. Um, so once they're done, if you kind of give it a haircut, um, they'll bloom again in the fall um, and, and you can enjoy them that way. The bees love these guys. So if you're looking to increase that bee population in your garden, lavenders are a great way to do it. Um, catmint is another one. It's not a herb of, of sorts. It is a, a almost like a type of mint. Uh, the animals are uh, very, they don't like it, um, So, but it's a great bee attractor. So if you are not seeing a lot of bees in your, your place, make sure that you have some cat men around and, and you'll get them that way. This one's called the the aromatico uh, blue imp this is a shorter lavender so if you're, you're looking for a smaller mound uh, this is a great one and you can see the difference in the flowers here um, than what that one has and the english lavender is more of like your your sachet lavender they have the long purple flowers that you can use for that Yes, you, you, you can definitely put all of this stuff out now. Um, sages are another one. Um, the, the, the lavenders are perennial, so they will come back year after year. Uh, the sages as well are perennial. Um, this will last through the winter. Um, so uh, find a spot for it that, that you like it, so it can stay there. Um, sages, there's all sorts of different varieties of sage. Um, I just like this one because it's, it's pretty. Um, there is the green, the regular green sage that you, you chop up and put in your Thanksgiving uh, stuffing. Um, great use for in the kitchen. I can't talk today. Rosemary is another favorite of ours um, for several reasons. Um, it's animal proof um, and you can cook with it. Um, and it has beautiful flowers. Um, blue flowers will just grow like crazy. Um, there are all sorts of different varieties of those as well. Um, I just brought two up. These are upright rosemary. Um, the barbecue is one that they came up with. It's a little bit thicker. Um, so uh, they, they wanted it so you could use it as for skewers um, when you're cooking. Um, so it's great. I actually planted one of these three years ago, and he's like six feet wide and about this tall. Um, so they grow really fast. Um, once a week watering, very drought tolerant, and nothing messes with them. It, it, it doesn't die in the winter? No. 
did it get water or not a water? Um, so if it has new growth, I did have some back there that turned purple on me because they had just come in and they got a little bit cold. Make sure that you're checking your varieties. Um, if you pick it up somewhere besides us, because I make sure that there's zone seven here when I get them in. Um, if you get rosemary from somewhere else, some of them are zone eight um nines and tens so there's a lot of different varieties of rosemary you just want to get the hardiest one um, but huntington carpet uh, Hus uh tuscan blue and the hill hardy are, are the most uh, hardiest of the, the rosemaries um, like i said i live in dewey and and these do fine for me yeah the, the the huntington carpet is the trailing rosemary yeah. Uh, is yeah, specific? you can cook with all of the, the rosemaries, absolutely. Oregano is a, uh, a great herb. Um, we all use it in our, our Italian cooking and stuff. Uh, it also makes a great ground cover. So if you're you have a troublesome spot that needs a ground cover, you can throw this in and use it for that. Um, they're also evergreen and will last through the winter. The deer, the deer usually do not eat it. Um, most of your herbs are pretty deer proof. Um, they might taste them just because it's new, but they should be fine. Oregano. Um, and there's all sorts of different varieties of oregano too. This one's hot and spicy. Um, and then this is just your regular Italian. Is it a Not like mint, not at all. Do you have a Mexican oregano? I don't. Um, I have had it in the past. Check with me. Um, occasionally I will get that. Uh, the sun requirement for the rosemary is full sun. It likes the heat. It likes to be dry. Once a week watering, once it gets established, absolutely. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, curry. Um, this is curry, and it smells amazing. Um, and it's pretty in a pot. I put that in a, my pot of uh, Caliber Coas last year, and it was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so... Herbs you can use in all different ways besides just putting them in your garden. Tarragon is another of the perennial herbs. Um, it's really weird because it's one of the last ones I ever get in. It's really hard to find, uh, but it is a perennial here. So it will come, um, uh, continue to uh, grow all season um, and it does stay green for you in the wintertime. Dill, dill's one of my favorites because I love pickles. Um, but um, I always put this, I usually plant this right next to my tomatoes because it, it's very touchy to the sun. Um, this will fry if you put it in the full sun. So make sure it's shaded by something um, so it doesn't get that hot afternoon sun. Um, but it smells good too, and it, you can use it in salads and dressings and all sorts of good stuff. Fish, yes. So I brought all sorts of mints around that I will pass around. Um, these can get invasive, so usually what I tell people is to put it in a pot and, and just enjoy it that way. That way it doesn't overtake your garden. Um, it, and, and that way you can make your teas and stuff like that. Um, this one's just regular spearmint. This is what we use um, to make mint juleps and all of that fun stuff. Um, this one here is just really pretty. Um, this is pineapple sage, and it smells really good. It's amazing how close they do come to that.
I've got two more that I'm going to pass around. I was going to do the chocolate mint, but everybody knows that one. Um, this one's orange mint, um, and it smells really good too. And then this one's the strawberry mint. There's actually banana mint. I've got grapefruit mint. Um, there's a pear mint over there. Um, so it's fun to play with it. And if you're into the tea, uh, making teas uh, on your own, they're fun to add to iced tea too. Um, but this one's good. This one really smells like strawberries. Time? Does anybody have the time? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Always wanted to say that. Um, uh, time, you can use it for cooking. Uh, you can also use it as a ground cover. This is the pink chintz time. Uh, a lot of people will use this as an alternative to grass uh, or lawns. Um, it does really well. It can handle the full sun. Um, you do need to water it. Uh, fairly regularly, um, but this six pack will give you a bunch of splotches of time uh, about that big. So a little goes a long way, but if you want it to fill in faster, you can definitely fill in more. Um, but thyme, there's all sorts of different types of the creeping thyme. Uh, this one has really pretty pink flowers. There's a red one that has darker red flowers. Uh, there's woolly thyme that is, is lower, uh, very small leaves, um, almost ground level. Um, this one gets a little bit bigger. Um, and then you have your edible thyme that gets taller, and it, but it's meant to be trimmed as you use it um, for cooking and stuff. Huh? Yes, they are. Um, as long as you keep it watered in the winter time. If you don't water it, it will die for you. Um, this is orange thyme. Uh, there is also lemon thyme, um, and then the French and English thyme uh, that most people use for their cooking. Um, do you guys want to smell the uh, thyme too? Sure. I'm not going to pass this one around. It doesn't smell like the other ones. <laughs> Um, lemon balm and lemongrass um, are two of the ones that I bring in, um, mostly for the mosquito issue that we tend to have around here, especially during our monsoon season. Um, but these are great as far as keeping mosquitoes at bay, uh, along with the citronella geraniums that I have. Uh, they don't like that smell. So if you put them on a pot on your patio uh, table, they'll, they'll stay away for you. Um, there is also an orange balm. I think it would, I don't see why it wouldn't work just as well as the, the citronella would. Um, but oh my, that smells good. Lemongrass um, will look like this. I actually brought this, this is wheatgrass. Um, if you have dogs and cats, your puppies and kitties will love to munch on this. Um, so I brought them in for your pets. Oh, here's my lemon. This is my lemongrass. Um, the lemon balm actually has a more citrus flavor or smell to it than the, the lemongrass does. Okay. So we've kind of talked about plants. Um, uh, when you go to plant, um, you definitely want to make sure that your, your soil is amended. Like I said, um, use your barn or manure if you're gonna to plant tomatoes uh, next month. If you're planning on planting something this weekend, don't use it. it it's not hot, but I, I don't like to put it straight into manure. Um, I'd rather use just the premium mulch and that'll give you the organic matter that you need in, in your garden. Um, when I plant, I usually side dress for, for my fertilizer, um, which each individual plant will get some, or it goes along the row, uh, depending on which way I decide to go. Um, so, and I do that often. I usually do it every two months. Uh, so, 
um, that way they continue to use the, uh, have those nutrients available um, so they can grow really big. Um, if you are using, I forgot the calcium. Um, if you are using the fruit and vegetable, this does, uh, this actually has the calcium in it. Um, so I love it for my vegetable garden. Um, calcium is a very important ingredient in your vegetable gardens because it protects from the blossom end rot that your tomatoes will get. So when you go to look at your tomatoes, um, you get these big black spots on the bottom of your tomatoes. That's blossom end rot, and it's a lack of calcium. So what happens is that when your tomato is forming, um, the flower actually doesn't fall off. And it's that lack of calcium that keeps that flower on. Um, so it just starts to rot on there. Um, so if you use the fruit and vegetable, you won't have that blossom end rot. Um, peppers get blossom end rot as well, along with um, squash. So your, your squash, if you've ever had them kind of start forming and then they just kind of, and they, they kind of shrivel up, that's blossom end rot on a squash. So make sure that your squash, your tomatoes, your peppers get calcium. Whether you use the, the fruit and vegetable, if you are a fan of the 744, go ahead and use it. Just add the calcium nitrate um, and do it early. If you're prepping uh, for May, put this in now so it can start working. Um, this is fast relief but it, it works, um, it, put it on the bottom when you plant it. So dig your hole, put it on the, uh, in the bottom of your hole and then put the tomato right on it. Um, and that way it can start soaking up. There's also a spray, it's, it's called Yield Booster and it's actually a spray on calcium uh, derivative. So you just spray that on the flowers and it goes straight into the plant. So you can use that as well. Huh? Um, as your every new flower comes on, you're going to spray it. Yeah. Um, so I would say spraying it every couple of days would probably keep you going. Um, oh, this just the, the one time uh, is all you need for that. Um, if you're using the spray, I would do it quite often. Um, when we start getting warm, a lot of tomatoes will start to drop. Tomatoes are kind of finicky, um, which is why they're not on the easy grow list. Um, if it gets too hot, they do drop their blossoms. Usually that stops once the monsoon season comes and our temperature kind of uh, falls down a little bit. Um, so don't worry too much. If you, you can, uh, put a shade cloth over the top. Uh, that will help. Um, I didn't get a lot of blossom drop last year because of my shade cloth. Uh, uh, it, it helps, yes. Um, but the, the shade cloth works better. Yeah. Um, so um, Flowers that can go into gardens. Um, marigolds are great um, because they kind of keep the aphids and stuff away. Um, introducing uh, friendly bugs like ladybugs uh, is another way of keeping uh, things out of your garden. Um, like I said, kind of keep an eye out for bugs. Um, if you start seeing bugs, you if you can, hose them down. I'm always a proponent of not using product, but if you have to uh, use a product, um, the triple action I, I like to use because of the pyrethrin and the neem oil combination. Um, the one caution I will say for the, the triple action is that you want to make sure that you're doing it early, early in the morning um, or late in the evening because the neem oil will make it burn. Um, it's kind of like when we were all young and we used to go sunbathing and when that was a good thing and we put the mineral oil or baby oil on and it just, um, so be careful. Um, I usually switch to the Sayonara once the heat comes on because it's, it's more of the pyrethrin and it's strictly that. 
um, or ladybugs. If you, like I said, if you have a lot of aphids, um, white fly is really hard, but you can use the sticky traps for the white fly and those work pretty well for you. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get rid of bugs naturally. Sometimes a hose will work um, because of the soft bodies of most insects. Um, that will get rid of them as well. So start natural and then work to, if it doesn't go away, then you can move to the stronger stuff. Flower Power um, is another one of our, our products. Um, I, I usually sell this for flower uh, hanging baskets and all the annual stuff, um, but it works. I use it every two weeks on my tomatoes just to keep them blooming. Um, so I use it on my garden every two weeks and, and it just keeps everything blooming. So I just get that pr production continuously all summer long. Um, root and grow. When I plant, I always use this. Um, I only use it once. It's not like a a tree where I'm going to use it for six weeks after I plant it. Um, once and done is all you need, but it, it you'll be amazed how fast and well things take root when you use this. Powdery mildew is one of the things we all battle with cucumber, zucchini, um, all those heavy leafy stuff. Um, the sage tends to get it as well. Um, when you're watering, don't water at night. Um, those cool nighttime temperatures causes powdery mildew. Um, so try to water early in the morning and that will keep uh, that powdery mildew at bay. Um, when June, uh, the end of June, early July hit and you start get, we start getting those monsoon rains on a regular basis. I always protect my stuff. I just start spraying fungicide on them uh, because it'll coat the leaves and you, it won't be as susceptible to that um, powdery mildew that you get. Um, so preventative spraying will help uh, keep that at bay. Uh, copper fungicide. I think this comes in a concentrate too. So buy the first bottle and then get the concentrate and reuse the bottle. Um, I don't get them very often. I meant to get the, the um, slugs can be sometimes a problem. Um, if you have a shady spot uh, that you have or you're staying really wet, uh, slugs can be an issue. Slug bait, you just kind of sprinkle in certain areas and, and they, they eat it and then they die. Um, grubs can also be a problem. When I was tilling up some of my stuff, um, getting ready for this, I, I found grubs in my garden already. So beware. Um, there are a systemic granule down there that is safe for your vegetable gardens and around your fruit trees and things. Um, so, um, Keep an eye on that and pay attention when you're digging uh, for that. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, her question was, is when can she plant basil? Wait until your tomatoes are planted. Um, basil is very, very finicky. All of this, uh, the herbs that I mentioned uh, before can go in now. Basil is the last one to put in. Yes, ma'am. Cat mint or nip? Nip. nip. Um, it, it will spread some, um, but it, it shouldn't get too, too, too very big. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole other subject. Um, so yeah, a fence helps from the deer. Um, they can jump over a six foot fence. So kind of start thinking about that. But if it's an area you guys are in, I have a four foot fence around my vegetable garden um, and they stay out of it, but it's my patio. So it's not somewhere where they, 
my fruit trees are a whole other story, um, but they are fenced in too. And, and I went six foot and then I did a wire on top of it. So I'm hoping this year will be okay. Um, so um, gophers, if you can, um, the, the Molmax um, is a preventative. You start at your garden and work out um, and you just, you, all you're doing is putting it on, it sinks into the soil it, and it chases them off. Um, if you see new holes um, and you can get to them, I use the gopher probe because uh, down my hill I have gophers and I use that to keep them at bay. I don't care if they're on the bottom of the hill, I don't want them on the top. Um, so I just keep using that. Um, basically, it's a probe that goes into the soil. Um, you kind of have to play around. Eventually, you, you, you almost fall on the ground because you go down. Um, once you do that, then you drop the bait. It goes right into the hole, and then they eat it, and they die. Um, so once I'm done with that, I kick the hill over um, and kind of stomp it down. So I know that I've taken care of that one. I just look for new mounds now. Um, so did that answer all that? Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, if you have any other questions, just let me know. Uh, if you see something here, take it. Um, if not, all my herbs are right